Hello, my name is Georgia Del Freo, and I'm the Vice President of Operations at the Greater Erie Community Action Committee, which you may know as GCAC. GCAC is Erie County's Community Action Agency. We focus on helping individuals to live a more financially stable life. My job at GCAC is to plan programs to meet community needs, find funding for them, and evaluate them to make improvements. I've been with GCAC for 21 years, and during my time there, I've had the opportunity to take on a leadership role within Erie Together, which is one of the co-hosts of the annual Youth Civic Engagement Symposium. Erie Together is a countywide citizen-driven movement to make the Erie region a community of opportunity where everyone can learn, work, and thrive. Simply put, it is a large network of individuals and organizations that work together sharing their time, expertise, and resources to tackle big issues that will improve our community and people's lives. Through the efforts of hundreds of volunteers, Erie Together has accomplished some great things. We've launched programs to help students explore careers and prepare for life after high school. We've led projects to help more people secure meaningful employment. We've taken on initiatives to help more families become self-sufficient. All of these achievements have been made possible through the active participation of volunteers, and that is what community engagement is all about. I am happy to be here to introduce this year's community engagement panel, which will highlight four exceptional organizations that have found ways to harness the power of volunteerism to do some amazing things in our community. We are excited for you to hear their stories. Serving on the panel are Anna Franz, Executive Director of R West Bayfront, Michael Washington, Executive Director of Serve Erie, Erica Romalo, Director of Community and Government Relations and Facilitator of Erie Gains at Gannon University, and Melissa McGill, Senior Community Outreach Specialist at Erie Insurance Group. We hope you enjoy and learn from their passion for volunteerism and that you too find your passion to become civically engaged. Thank you, Georgia. Hello, my name is Sheila Starrett, and I'm the Western PA Director for U.S. Senator Pat Toomey's. Today's Youth Civic Engagement Symposium topic will focus on the importance of community engagement. Civic engagement includes communities working together or individuals working alone in both political and non-political actions to protect the public values or make changes in a community. The practice of civic engagement has an important impact in educating students like yourself about your rights and responsibilities as citizens and allowing you to develop skill sets that are valuable to you as you transition into life after high school. Examples of civic responsibility include voting in elections, signing up for the military, volunteering in the community, and participating in government politics and even holding a public office. Today, you are joined by four leaders from the Erie community who will share their, their experiences and expertise as they work independently and collectively to make Erie a better place to live, work, and thrive. First, I would like Anna Franz to please tell us a little about herself and her job. Thank you, Sheila. So I'm Anna Franz. I am the director of Our West Bayfront, which is a nonprofit neighborhood improvement organization that works to strengthen the West Bayfront neighborhoods directly to the west of downtown Erie. Um, we are a small organization that serves a community of about 13,000 residents um, and well over 100 businesses, basically working to make stronger neighborhoods for everyone to live in, work in, and play in. And next, we'd like Michael Washington to introduce himself. Thank you, Sheila. My name is Michael Washington. I am the Executive Director for Serve Erie. And what I do is I mobilize volunteers by partnering with different organizations and churches. And we go into what is called the Heritage District, which is made up of the streets of Holland to Wayne and 6th to 12th. And we are looking to make that area a better place to live. Thank you, Michael. And Erica Romalo? Thank you, Sheila. My name is Erica Romalo, and I'm the Director of Community and Government Relations for Gannon University. At the university, I work very directly with a lot of community partners that are very close to our campus. 
The purpose of my job is to connect our students with community to build collaborative partnerships and improvements downtown. I've been working in the city of Erie my entire career at the county level, at the state level, and now at the university level. And lastly, Melissa McGill. Thanks, Sheila. My name is Melissa McGill. I am a senior community outreach specialist at Erie Insurance, working in the community outreach and economic development department. I've been with Erie for a little over 16 years, and for the last eight years, I've had the privilege of working with our community outreach team. Part of my job is to promote Erie throughout our footprint, which is 12 states, including the District of Columbia, by building strategic nonprofit partnerships to align with Erie's strategic giving goals and philanthropic giving through donations of money, materials, and time. I also help promote community engagement activities and work very closely with our employees and agents in all of our communities. Okay, and our first question will go to Anna. Anna, what is our best West Bayfront and how do you serve the community? So our West Bayfront is uh, a nonprofit organization um, that is really uh, intended to strengthen the West Bayfront neighborhoods. So much of the work that we do involves um, stabilizing the community through housing improvements, improving and enhancing the parks in the community, uh, infrastructure, improving public safety. Um, and then a, a large part of what we do uh, is to create opportunities for neighbors to come together, share information and resources, and really mobilize and um, uh, build community leaders. Um, because we're a small organization, we want our, our neighbors to have a stronger voice in the community. Um, so we try to connect people wherever possible. And can you tell us what type of volunteers you look for, and where do they come from, and what opportunities are available through our West Bay Front? Sure, we really rely on volunteers for all aspects of the work that we do because we are a small organization in terms of staff. Um, so we rely on volunteers to do different projects including um, event planning, um, uh, sort of hands-on projects like gardening, some um, uh, sort of housing improvements. Um, really it runs the gamut. There's, there's usually an opportunity for anyone, sort of regardless of what their interest is. Um, and we draw on lots of different community partners for volunteers. So first and for more, foremost are the residents from the community, um, but also members of our faith community, um, of schools in the area, um, of businesses in the area, as well as businesses throughout the region. Um, volunteers of all ages usually can find a place um, helping out with the work of our West Bayfront. And it sounds like a lot of the characteristics that you have are they're really hands-on for volunteers. What other types of um, characteristics are you looking for from a volunteer? Yeah, so first of all, I would say um, we, we look for volunteers who are dependable, um, though our volunteers are not paid, obviously. Um, we do rely on them. So you know, finding people who are sort of showing up when they say they, they will and um, ready to, to get to work, that's, that's a huge piece of it. Um, secondly, I think volunteers who are willing to work as a team. Um, the work that we do is very team oriented, so finding people who are willing to work together and be flexible um, and also be proactive is, is really important for us. And then thirdly, volunteers who are there to have a good time. Um, we, want, you know, we, we want people to come back, we want to see volunteers enjoying the work that they're going to do. Um, so volunteers who can enjoy themselves when they're out and about in the community is a big piece of it. Okay, thank you. And Michael Washington, can you tell us a little bit about Servieri, how it was formed, how long it was formed, and how many years ago? Sure. So Servieri is an organization that started with a couple of churches. And the reason that it was formed is because when you looked at a map of the city of Erie, what you would notice is in the footprint that I mentioned earlier, people would call that the donut hole because there were resources being invested into the city in all areas except for that one place. And so these churches said, you know what, we can do something about that. And so they came together and they said, what are some things that we can do? And so what they did is they started to partner together and they went into the community and they asked people, what is the need? And what we found is that there are tons of organizations that are already doing great work. So we don't need to try and reinvent the wheel. What we would do is focus on mobilizing volunteers because when we would speak to other organizations, what we found out from them 
was we can find money, we can find other resources, we have a hard time getting people connected. And then when we would begin to talk to the churches, what we found is that there are people that want to get involved, they just didn't know how. And so Serviri was created to help bridge that gap, to give people opportunities to serve in their community um, and make it easy for the organizations to do the work that they do. Okay, great. And what kind of projects does Serviri do in the community? Yeah, so we do a thing called Serviri Saturday. And what that is intended to do is to partner with other organizations to come alongside them and help them do things that people don't really realize are important. So we send volunteers to multiple organizations to help them do things like landscaping work, helping them file, helping them paint, get themselves organized so that way they don't have to focus on that behind the scenes stuff. They can really put their initiatives into doing their bigger projects. We also do a thing called the Summer Project where we actually go out into our footprint. We just recently had a summer cleanup where we partnered with 25 different organizations to go into the Heritage District and we were going throughout the neighborhood picking up trash, mowing grass, and we partnered with the city when people had things like refrigerators, tires, um, any other big electronics, the city came alongside of us to move those things. Thank you. And how does Serve Erie recruit volunteers? Where can people find out about volunteer opportunities within Serve Erie? Yeah, so that's multiple places. They can go to our website, which is just simply serveerie.com, and you can look on our volunteer form and you can fill that out and somebody will reach out to you. We also partner heavily with a lot of churches in our area. So if you are connected with a church, you can probably speak to one of your ministers and they can get you connected to somebody. And we also go into the, or, uh, the community and we find businesses that we can partner with, places like Erie Insurance. And Erie Insurance is good at sending volunteers out to the project. So we're really trying to make it as simple as possible. Thank you very much. Hey, next, we're going to hear from Erica Ramallah from Gannon University. Erica, what is Erie Gains and why did Gannon University create it? Erie Gains stands for Erie, Gannon Alliances to Improve Neighborhood Sustainability. We are made up of about 3,300 undergraduate students right now. And back in 2010, our president came up with the idea of Erie Gains because first, all of our students are already volunteering as part of either their academics or their clubs. And two, if we could really focus our efforts downtown become a true neighbor to our community partners and connect our um, knowledge, skills, and abilities with the community skills and abilities, we can really help improve downtown Erie. So that's one of the reasons that Erie Gains was created and why it continues to move forward and deepen our partnerships in the community. Erica, why is it important for students to volunteer as they proceed through high school? When you're in high school, you're starting to build who you are and what you want to do with your life. It's really difficult to know exactly what career you want to be in, but by volunteering, it can help you decide what you enjoy, what type of opportunities you want to be part of in your community. And also, as you apply for colleges, um, that volunteerism can really help support your admissions application. Universities such as Gannon look at the whole person. They look at all of the activities they've been involved in. And if your grades aren't quite as high as you hope they'd be, um, at Gannon we do look at the holistic part of the person and that volunteerism can help support your, um, your entry into college. Right. And what are some of the personal benefits of volunteering to students and to young adults? Volunteering um, to young adults and within your community can really grow who you are as a person. It can help you understand what your community is all about. It can give you different perspectives of what people are thinking, how they grew up, how they're learning. It gives you another vision about what other people are looking for in their community and it opens your mind to different opportunities and the different futures that our community might have. Okay, thank you. And Melissa. Erie Insurance encourages all their employees to volunteer in the community they serve and even allow them to take time off of work to do this. What is the import, why is this important to Erie Insurance, the largest employer in Erie County? Erie Insurance has been known for being above all in service since our founding in 1925. Today, our employees and our agents continue that legacy of service not only to our policyholders and our employees, but also to the communities where our employees and agents live and work. One of the ways we're able to do that is by providing a program called Erie Service Corps. 
Erie Service Corps is available for employees to practice their civic engagement by participating on teams to provide community service throughout the workday. Our Erie Service Corps teams respond to community needs while promoting Erie's commitment to corporate social responsibility. Also, community service has many unexpected benefits that are good for the employee and the organization, which we've heard earlier today from team building to building professional skills, communication, problem solving, decision making, and we're able to do all of that and bring it back to the organization while helping a community with what they need. And what type of volunteer services does Erie Insurance encourage to its employees? Are there more popular types of volunteer projects that employees tend to gravitate to? There are. And um, Erie Insurance promotes community engagement activities, which are different from true volunteerism. So volunteerism is when you as an individual are working for a cause that's important to you, but you're not getting paid for that. Whereas at Erie Insurance, through our Erie Service Corps program, it is community service work being done during the workday, so you are getting paid. So there's a difference between volunteerism and community engagement. So we look for projects that are able to be team building and fit into that community engagement during our typical workday. We also have three giving focus areas, community building, safety, and environmental responsibility. So we also look for nonprofits and projects that fit into those focus areas. So some popular ones that go with those categories are Habitat for Humanity, um, food packing and distribution for local food banks. We also partner with local neighborhoods. We just had Erie Insurance employees out, as we heard earlier, for Serve Erie's summer project in the historic district last week. Um, and also, what's popular right now for environmental responsibility is we have Presque Isle right in our backyard, so the beach cleanups are very popular this time of year. And Melissa, specifically, what would be some of the more rewarding volunteer experiences that you have taken part of? I have the ability to participate in many of the activities um, because I'm managing the Service Corps program. And for me, um, going out and working with the nonprofits directly, understanding how just a little bit of our time goes a long way for the community and what they need, seeing our employees build different skill sets and network across the organization, and just truly being able to pay it forward and working for an organization that believes in investing in our communities and in the lives of others. The next set of questions is going to be for the entire panel. You took on your respective professional and volunteer roles with a certain amount of experience and awareness about what you were getting into. Have you had something difficult to face that you didn't expect, and how did you prepare yourself for that? Anna, would you like to start? Sure. Um, so the role that I'm in right now is the first professional role where I've actually been responsible for managing volunteers. Um, and I would say a couple things has surprised me sort of working in, in that capacity. Um, first of all is how in some ways easy it is um, when there was an organization set up basically to invite people to volunteer, how many people have taken that opportunity and um, really come out and volunteered in all sorts of different ways. Um, but I think on the flip side of that is um, the level of um, support and sort of understanding that needs to be provided by the organization to support those volunteers. Not everyone is sort of ready for all types of volunteer activities and sort of understanding what um, needs and sort of level of readiness a volunteer comes into that role is really important to having a successful volunteer experience. So, you know, sort of learning from our experiences and growing as an organization has been a part of um, the work that we've done. Okay, thank you. Michael, is there anything you'd like to share about something that you may not have been prepared for or you didn't expect? Sure. So I came into my role um, with a little bit of experience because I'm a pastor. And so I was used to managing volunteers and trying to get them to move towards a certain goal. What I wasn't expecting was how difficult it was to get everyone from different backgrounds to come together and figure out a way to accomplish one simple, or not one simple, one single task. Um, and so I've been really trying to figure out ways of how do you be respectful for people that come in that don't think like you, you know, that don't have the same understandings that you have, that might not have the same experience as you have, sort of like what Anna was saying, that um, you can't just throw everybody into uh, a volunteer role just because they're looking for something to do. You have to make sure that it's the right fit because if you don't, what I've seen is that people can get burnt out because they're trying to take on things that they weren't prepared for. So I've been trying to figure out that balance, um, but I am thankful for the experience that I've had as a pastor because it's helped me be a little bit prepared for it. Okay, thank you. 
And Erica, do you have anything to share? Sure. So when I came into my role at Gannon University, I had had several years of experience of working with people out in the community, um, taking constituent concerns, working with people that were em underemployed or unemployed. Um, what I thought was really interesting that maybe I wasn't quite prepared for was when we were working in community with small clubs or organizations, um, sometimes the people that you think you're supporting, maybe you aren't really doing what they need. Mm. Perhaps we haven't asked them what they're looking for. Um, one, one sort of example that comes to mind is we had a group of individuals who were outside planting trees in front of a small strip plaza. The students looked very concerned and when I came over I came to realize that they were planting a tree in front of a business owner's sign and the business owner was really not happy that the tree was going there. I would say that some of the skills that I brought over from my other jobs was the ability to talk and listen to start to really understand the reasoning why somebody might not be very happy with the volunteerism you're providing and then to be able to pivot and come up with a new idea. Um, we did move the tree, we put it in a different location, and the property owner was still grateful for the tree that was there without blocking their sign. Okay. Great. Melissa, do you have any um, things that might have been uh, unforeseen in your situations at work? I do. With managing the volunteer program that I mentioned, Erie Service Corps, when it first got started, we and our team came up with all these ideas and worked with different nonprofits, which we thought would be great to get our teams together. And then really understanding with our employees, there are two reasons why people want to volunteer. One, they're either really passionate about the cause, or two, they really like the work they want to do. For example, Habitat, we've mentioned that a few times. They have those skills and they want to go out and help that homeowner. So from what we put forward at first with everything that we thought people would just get on board with, and Erie employees are so passionate and really do want to give back, we had to take a step back, talk to our employees. How do you want to give back? Where is the need in the community? And then kind of reassess that with their interest as well as the needs in the community. So that was something different. Um, we had a pivot also weather in Erie County. Um, a lot of our stuff is done outside and so there always has to be a plan B um, and able to get the work done because our time is very valuable to these nonprofits. Like I mentioned before, just a few hours we can be there goes a long way for them and just being able to make sure we get the work done that is needed. Thank you. And the um, final question is what advice would you give to um, young students in high school wanting to volunteer into the community? Yeah, would you like to go first? Sure. Um, so the first thing I would say is spend a little time doing your homework so you understand what the organization um, that you're looking at does and make sure that it meets your goals and is the type of organization that you want to support. Um, that'll help you understand sort of your role and how your contribution is making a difference um, in helping them achieve their mission. The second thing I would say um, is try to sort of have a, a good idea of what type of volunteer experience you are able to provide. Are you looking for something where you're going to be in an office helping with paperwork? or are you really more comfortable out um, in the neighborhood um, you know, picking up litter or sharing information? Find something that sort of matches your personality so that um, you have a successful experience and it, it makes you want to come back and do it again. Michael, do you have any advice? Yeah. Um, I would encourage young people to actually get outside of the things that they normally would do. I would encourage you to um, find ways that you can get connected with people that are not like you. Um, that way, when you're getting involved, you're making sure that you're actually fitting the need and not just doing what you think it is. For example, I've had people come to me uh, through Servia and they've said, oh, I want to go and plant rose bushes in people's yards at the Heritage District. And we're trying to explain to them, as lovely as that sounds, that might not be the thing that they're looking for. Um, they're looking for ways of how am I going to get my water heater fixed. Mm -hmm. And so if you come down there with the wrong mindset because you think something or you're used to a certain way, you actually might end up offending people. And I know that the goal for you to want to get involved is to make sure that you're being a benefit. So make sure, like Anna said, that you're doing your research, that you're really studying on what it is that you're wanting to do. That way you can be the best at it. Okay, great. And Erica, what advice would you have for students interested in volunteering in their community? My advice would be to really step out of your comfort zone. It's okay to go to an area that maybe you're not as comfortable with. Um, and having the service of conversation, just the service of friendship, perhaps you're serving meals at a um, shelter, 
step away from behind that table, sit down and share a meal with somebody right next to you. It'll be amazing the stories you hear and how it might change your perspective on what's happening in the community around you. And Melissa, do you have anything you would like to share? Those were all very great and I would echo um, what we've heard so far and also just from the unexpected benefits that I had mentioned for you and for the community. As you're out volunteering, you know, you're able to pay it forward, get out there and really see your face to face. I know Habitat for Humanity, you're building a home with these homeowners and the importance of that. And like Erica mentioned, having the conversation and understanding why it's important to them. You know, sometimes you might just be out there because you know you need to get out and volunteer and it's the right thing to do, but it really gives added benefits to you. It'll set you apart from your peers and it'll help you build other skills that you need as you develop in your personal life and your career. Um, communication and networking is key and helping to volunteer really does support that. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, and on behalf of the Youth Civic Symposium, I want to thank everyone on our panel today for giving the awesome stories that you shared and encouraging our youth to volunteer. And I think they're all going to walk away knowing why it's better to serve the community. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.